discussing the uh, correlation between amphibians and reptiles. Reptiles have dry scaly skin, amphibians do not. They need to be close to water because their respiration is supplemented by what for amphibians since they're close to water. Their, their moist skin actually supplements their uh, respiration. Then reproductive terms. How is it different in reptiles as opposed to amphibians? Okay, so amphibians do that just like fish, uh, many species of fish, but what's different in the egg or eggs with reptiles? Yeah, they got a protective shell on them. That's right. Okay, then who's got the teeth and the claws? Reptiles do. That's right. Okay. Then we move on to, uh, we're going to spend a little bit of time on uh, circulation. What's true about the blood pressure in reptiles? Yeah, it's certainly higher. And one of the reasons for that is, okay, when you look at the chambers of their heart, okay, fish, what do you know about those? And you saw that in the shark. How many chambers do fish have? Two, three, or four? They've only got two. Then nature selected amphibians to have how many chambers in their heart? They've actually got a three-chambered heart because you got to remember with that of amphibians, they're not totally true breathing tetrapods because their skin is moist. Okay? So since their skin is moist, the supplementation, oxygen is absorbed through their uh, moist, thin-skinned um, dermis or epidermis, if you want to call it that. And then when we talk about reptiles with their circulation, they've got a, f a rudimentary four-chambered heart. Okay? And what, what that really means then is the idea of there's actually flow patterns that move through that heart. There's a separation between the two. And when we get to that, we will put a diagram up here to try to make sense of that. Okay. So we just talked about this with the jaws. They get uh, uh, it increase their mechanical advantage here because they become larger in size and then they become longer that increases its mechanical advantage okay and then we said also the idea that reproduction is now entirely on land because that embryo is totally encased in a protective shell okay then res or respiration circulation it's an efficient circulatory system because the blood pressure is higher than that of amphibians. Now typically when we think high blood pressure that for mammals and humans we think that is bad but in this case it's not because it just makes it work more efficiently because in humans when we're talking about high blood pressure chances are we're, we're referring to the heart is actually working harder than what it actually needs to because you also have to take into account Endothermic or ectothermic? Reptiles. Are they endothermic or ectothermic? They are cold-blooded, so they are ectothermic. Because if they produce heat within, like birds, mammals, humans, that is endo, being an endothermic organism. Okay? Which means you need a lot more nutrients to keep your uh, body temperature at a stable, uh, what I want to say, uh, uh, level okay we might get a little cold but if we walk outside today even with this cool southeast breeze of a wind you could walk from here to perhaps 34 stop short sleeve shirt no jacket no coat no gloves hats on or anything it might be dis might not be comfortable, it might be some discomfort in that, but you can do that because your body is still producing heat on the inside. 
Reptiles cannot do that because they are cold-blooded. Okay. perhaps make sense of, of this okay you're at home now you got to do the dishes uh, but if you try to make a little uh, have a little fun with the chore that you're trying to do you get ready to roll your eyes okay there there is you could say some complex uh, some semi-complex science behind how soap actually works. So with that, when you think of the chemistry behind that, like I do, it kind of maybe makes it a little more bearable, which maybe, oh gosh. See, there's, your, there's, where, there's where your eye roll is supposed to take place. Okay, But if you have a sink full of water, okay, and if you have a clear type of bowl, okay, here's our bowl. It's glass, we can see on the inside. You set that bowl down on the bottom, okay? And the glass bowl is totally full, okay? So then when you pull this glass bowl up, depending how big it is, there's a short amount of time where that water follows that bowl all the way up because the pressure inside is holding that water in there, okay? And it's all about the pressure. So what happens here, inside these reptiles' hearts, some species, this flow pattern does not allow mixing because some of them have what we call incomplete separations. For mammals, birds, and humans, that can be catastrophic. Okay? So I think maybe we want to do one more slide, and we'll illustrate what we mean by being catastrophic. What do we have here next? Uh, respiration, okay? Which means that's what we're going to do on Tuesday. So we got a little bit of time here. So I'm going to blank this out, okay? And in this case, okay, did any of you ever have an electrical racetrack, uh, a toy racetrack, okay? Sometimes, you know, you, you put the pieces together. There's two types of racetracks that you can do. Okay, I remember having one when I was growing up. You can have like a standard racetrack like this. Okay, so the cars are just starting here and they just go around and then around and around. Is there a different design that you can do? Okay. Uh, some, of, some of them are probably a little more extravagant than others. Or you can possibly do something like that. They're, they're supposed to be the same size, by the way. They're probably not going to be lopsided like that. But the idea behind this is explaining the circulation between a single loop and a double loop. Okay, This meaning here's the heart right here. To where blood, like in fish, it's flowing around, it gets over here to the gills, it flows to the rest of the body, back to the heart, to the gills, back to the heart, okay? Notice when we're talking about respiration, we're saying gills. What's the other organ of respiration? Lungs, okay? So what happens is what nature had selected, we could say that here is the heart here, and then we'll say the lungs is here. So the heart sends blood to the lungs, okay? Then it exchanges oxygen and blood gases, then it goes to the rest of the body, 
delivers oxygen, picks up carbon dioxide, comes back to the heart. Okay. I said that wrong. Okay. So we've got deoxygenated blood. Okay. Goes to the lungs, picks up oxygen, then goes to the rest of the body, then back to the heart, then back to the lungs, to the rest of the body, back to the heart, to the lungs. Okay? So it's kind of like this racetrack that what we see here. Okay? That's a double loop. Okay? Because you have oxygenated blood and deoxygenated blood. So then I think I have some other markers here. Yeah, here they are. Okay. Sorry? Uh, no, um, because it either has to go from the heart to the rest of the body or the heart to the lungs. It's one or the other. It can't, it can't be any other. Uh, I suppose you could say we're kind of splitting hairs here because when the blood does come back to the heart, some of it goes up to the brain, some of it goes to the rest of the body. So uh, when you say, is there another loop in here? Yes, it, but technically no, because it's either oxygenated or deoxygenated. Okay, I've never had anyone ask that question before. Huh. Okay. So now what we see happening, okay, in reptiles. And in mammals, what would they possibly be? Okay, so we've got this trachea coming down just like in snakes, just like in alligators, lizards. There's going to be this trachea that comes down here. Okay, and then we've got this bronchial tree, okay, that goes into the lungs. Okay, at least that's what it's supposed to look like. I'm, I'm not a very good artiste or artist, as you can tell. Okay, so then I think maybe, okay, that's a little better. All right, so then in between there, whether it's a alligator, a caiman, I'm not sure the internal anatomy of a snake, but probably uh, lizards and mammals, humans. In between the two lungs, it's not the exact shape, but there's the heart there, okay? So then we'll do this and we'll do that. Because as we know, when it comes to that of the heart for reptiles, birds, Mammals and humans, how many chambers? Four of them, okay? So then when we talk about that, we've got, careful, you've got a mirror image, okay? So in other words, like in other classes, I will say, I know this is my right side. I'll look and say, okay, left side. I'm pointing with my right hand, but I'm looking at the left side. Because you got to remember, you are looking at a mirror. Okay, this is like what a mirror would be as well. Okay, so then when you turn this around in this mirror, this is not, these are atria, atria, ventricle, ventricle. Okay, but when you do that, Which one is the left atria? Which one is the right atria when you're looking at this mirror image? This side is which one? Well, here's my left hand, but it's a mirror image. You've got to turn it around. Okay? So this is the right atria, left atria, right ventricle, left ventricle. Okay? So notice one of the things that it said, the very last thing. It said some reptiles have an incomplete separation, okay? This is a complete separation between the ventricles, okay? And that's where we're receiving deoxygenated blood on this side. Then it comes down here and it sends it to the lungs. Gas exchange takes place. 
Now it's full of oxygen. It's coming back to the left side, then down to the left ventricle, and then pumped to the rest of the body. And I like this double loop that we see here. So if it's an incomplete separation, it's a fancy way of saying, well, there's a hole in the heart here. Okay? But nature had selected some of these animals that blood is not going to mix. Okay? But for mammals and humans, we could say that this is almost catastrophic. The, I mean, it can be fixed surgically. And if it is, chances are it's done when an individual is probably in an infant or toddler. Because as you're getting closer to an adolescent, it's not that it's too late, but maybe they don't live that long. But when we say this, why would this be catastrophic for humans? I mean, some, it used to be that they probably just did not live very long. Because you've got to remember, for a high metabolism, you need two subst substances constantly. What would that possibly be? Oxygen's one, and that will that's in nutrients. So water we would consider a nutrient. Okay? But if you have deoxygenated blood over here that's coming from the rest of the body, where is that blood supposed to go? If this is coming from the rest of the body and then goes to the lungs for gas exchange, that means there's very little oxygen in there. But then it's going to come back to the lungs full of oxygen. Then it's going to come down here, and then it's supposed to go to the rest of the body. But if you have oxygen-poor blood on this side mixing with oxygen-rich blood on this side, if it's going back and forth, you're going to send blood with not as much oxygen as what it needs to the rest of the body. That's what we mean by being anemic, because if how many have donated blood before or tried? Okay, they will poke your finger, and they're going to do a simple iron test. Okay, they are testing something very specific in the, your hemoglobin. Here's your iron, and from physical science, yay, this iron's got a plus two charge. Okay. Because oxygen has a what for a charge? Negative something. Negative. Not negative one. Negative four. Okay, that adds up to zero. So when you're doing this iron test, you are seeing how much iron is available that's hooking up to this oxygen to carry it to the rest of the body. Okay, the, and, and that's why if you're running low on iron, you're not being able to carry that much needed oxygen throughout the body. That's why they do that test. All right, so I think that's enough. We'll catch up to you next time. Finish circulation and respiration on Monday and Tuesday, and we'll get into the lizards. All right, tune in next time. All right.